Bombs, terrorist groups, war and destruction, natural disasters, things we have all come to fear that will end our world. But with the recent rise in biotechnology, could there be an even more insidious factor? Hiding, ready to bring about the end of the world as we know it. Anthrax, deadly, insidious, and practically unstoppable. Anthrax is a serious disease caused by gram-positive, rod-shaped bacteria known as Bacillus anthracis. Normally found naturally in the soil, it commonly infects domestic and wild animals around the world. Though it rarely affects humans, contact with anthrax can cause severe and even deadly bleeding. Bacillus anthracis is rumored to have made an appearance since the 1400s BC. First recorded in the early writings of Mesopotamia in the Book of Genesis, the 5th and 6th Egyptian plagues of the Old Testament showed the typical symptoms of anthrax. The mention of anthrax has also made appearance in the works of Virgil and the early Hindi and Greek literatures. Breakthrough for what the disease really was didn't occur until 1850, when scientists Pierre Rayer and Casimir Joseph Devain identified the small rods. Even so, it wasn't until 1881 that the famous Louis Pasteur proved that Bacillus anthracis actually was the cause of anthrax. The bacteria produces spores that are dormant and can live in the environment, like soil, for a long time, even decades. When the spores enter the water and nutrient-rich bodies, a perfect breeding ground, they can be activated and turn into growing cells. When they become active, the bacteria can multiply, spreading about the body and starting to release toxins and poisons that cause severe illness and death. Most of those who are infected by anthrax work with infected animals or animal products such as wool, hides, or hair. Anthrax is the most common in third world and developing countries where there is little to no proper veterinary care. There are three essential types of anthrax, cutaneous inhalation and gastrointestinal. One form of infection is initiated when the endospores enter through a cut or abrasion in the skin. This is known as cutaneous anthrax. Once inside the skin, the endospores migrate to the bloodstream. Another form of infection can result from the introduction of endospores into food, which is then consumed. This is known as gastrointestinal anthrax. Inhalation anthrax is the third form of infection and occurs when airborne endospores are inhaled into the body. After a brief journey to the lungs, the endospores enter alveolar sacs where they attach to the tissue of the alveoli. This is where the body initiates an immune response against the anthrax endospores. Immune cells in the body, called macrophage cells, become alert of the enemy. Once the spores enter the body, symptoms can take anywhere from one day to more than two months to appear. Symptoms include small and itchy bumps, painless skin sores with black centers, fevers, chills, sweats, shortness of breath, vomiting of blood, nausea, bloody diarrhea, and severe stomach pain. Normal incubation period is five to seven days, though there are documented cases of the illness occurring up to 60 days after exposure. Symptoms include fever and chills, shortness of breath, confusion or dizziness, and headaches. Very few treatments exist for doctors to use to cure anthrax. For treatment, usually a mixture of antibiotics and antitoxins are used. Common antibiotics used to target anthrax include penicillin and ciprofloxacin, and are usually administered intravenously. Considering how deadly this virus is and its practical incurability, it is inevitable that it would be used for violent insidious purposes. Bio. As early as World War II, countries such as England have been testing anthrax scientifically to identify its potential use as a weapon of terror. In 1942, on Grinyard Island off the coast of Scotland, the British conducted their first scientifically controlled VW field trials. Scientists exploded anthrax bombs near a mobilized sheep to determine if the spores would survive an explosion and retain the ability to infect anyone nearby. Test results showed that anthrax could in fact be effectively dispersed by explosive devices and could also remain viable in the soil for decades. This brought home the realization 
that if an anthrax bomb were dropped on a city like London, the results could have been catastrophic. Grinyard Island was declared off limits until it was decontaminated in the 1980s. It's now safe for both humans and animals. Less than one week after the horrid 9-11 attacks, the United States is hit by a marathrax. Anthrax attacks. Five people were killed, 17 others became sick when letters filled with anthrax appeared in U.S. mail rooms after the September 11th attacks. Eight years later, the FBI determined deceased Army scientist Bruce Ivins sent them out to lawmakers and news departments committing the worst act of bioterrorism in U.S. history. Five would be dead, and thousands of others exposed to one of the deadliest bacteria known to man. With this availability of anthrax as a lethal, violent, and practically undetectable weapon, what can we do to combat it being used as a bioterrorist weapon? Very little. We can only endeavor to stop terrorists from obtaining it, or being prepared for when it does happen. Mr. Fetland, as this case of anthrax turned out to be a deliberate attack, would more people already be showing some adverse reactions? Uh, that's a good question, Mike. And the, the, the trick with anthrax is that unlike a hijacking or other event where you immediately know uh, that there is a problem and a person involved, uh, with anthrax you can leave it behind. Uh, the incubation period could take as long as 30 days so that they can uh, infect an area and be gone and you wouldn't have a clue.